and welcome to another session of Peer Talk. My name is Aladi. Today with me, I have a special, special guest on the line. You know, um, this young lady um, is using a platform to promote peace, to promote uh, unity, and uh, um, to promote um, wellness and mindfulness. You know, um, this lady has a lot of compassion. And her compassion is not only limited to human beings, but she extended it to animals as well. My guest today is Blooming Dale. Welcome to Pierre Talk Queen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us, man. We really appreciate this. Thank you. Yeah. How you been? How is it the East Coast? The East Coast is good right now. It's yeah. kind of cold. So I don't like that. <laughs> okay. I don't like the East Coast <laughs> winter time. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, man. Uh, let's get into it. So, um, you know, when we we, we want to uh, when, when we're talking to our guests, we just want to um let our our viewers know, you know, who they're talking to. You know, I just want you to um give us a, a synopsis about you, just a little bit, you know, introduction about who you are and then uh, what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously my name is Blooming Dale and Mac, and I basically own Blooming Woman. It's like a wellness and healing. I'm certified in different um, healing um, certifications and practices that I do. Reiki, access bars, energetic healing, womb healing. And I created my own company called Blooming Woman. And then I also named my YouTube channel Blooming Woman as well. And I'm also originally from Africa. Oh and yeah, shout yeah. out to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> the West Coast of Africa to be specific, from Liberia. I was born in Liberia. Mm. So yeah, and grew up in a little bit around the world and mostly in America. Wow, that's amazing, man. You know, I was watching your video the other day, you know, you were telling like um, some of the countries, you know, you, you've been to when you was young. I was like, wow, this lady, no wonder why she has a lot of knowledge, you know, <laughs> <laughs> has a lot of experience, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, um, yeah, so then after that, you know, you've been to Gambia, right? Yes, recently. Oh, yeah, you just, you just got back, right? Yes. All right, that's that's amazing. So, why Gambia? You know, what motivated you to, you know, to go to Gambia? Honestly, um, what motivated me for Gambia is all of the hype on social media with Gambia. You know, mm. um, I didn't really know too much about Gambia, but you know, all the different YouTubers out there started to promote yeah. Gambia. They're putting Gambia in a really good light. You know, talking about all the opportunities there talking about how beautiful it is, yeah. talking about how much it's the smiling coast and everybody's smiling. Mm -hmm. so I said, you know what? <laughs> so we got to be smiling today. You yeah, know? <laughs> I want to go. I want to see. I want to start smiling, you know. Absolutely. And um, I wanted to go to uh, Africa for a long time now. I mm. wanted to move there permanently for like four years, but I didn't know what country to go to. And after I seen all the positive feedback on Gambia, I said, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna visit first. So. Wow, that's amazing, and you did. So, so tell us you know, some of your, your experiences in Gambia. You know, what have you, you know, experienced? And yeah, yeah. I mean, I can tell you the good experiences. Mm. I can tell you the bad experiences. Absolutely. Hopefully. Tell it all, Queen. <laughs> Hopefully, nobody comes yeah. after me with that. Absolutely. Um, but some of the good experiences I had with Gambia. Uh, was definitely going to be the majority of Black people that were around me mm. when I was in Gambia. It made me feel very comfortable, you know, especially coming from the U.S. Um, I know you know what I'm talking about because you live in the U.S. right now. Right. It's like, you know, you kind of feel like a minority here. Absolutely. So that was number one that was number one on my list is how much black people are around you know the doctors are black the the lady in the shops are black everyone's black it's the majority and that made me feel comfortable um another thing that i really liked about the gambia as well 
is going to be the food. Like I'm vegan. Mm. So I know some people will say, what, how are you surviving? Fruits and vegetables, no meat. Green what? stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but the produce mm. inside of Gambia, I think because the land is so, um, it's so fertile and everything's organic, no GMO, no processed foods, mm. that the fruits and vegetables just taste better. My body felt better after eating the fruits and vegetables because they didn't have much chemicals and they weren't manipulated. So mm. I would say the fruits and vegetables were definitely good. The people were nice. They were very um, happy. I had moments when I was in the Gambia where I had to pinch myself because honestly, before I came to the Gambia, I kept hearing the smiling coast, the smiling coast. And I was thinking, there's no way everyone's just smiling. And there were moments where I was upset for my own personal reasons, you know, having a cloudy day. And then I look around and I'm like, wow, like these people are really happy. Like everyone that just passed me is actually smiling. I was like, let me fix my face a little bit so yeah. I can smile too. <laughs> So wow. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's amazing. And I would say some of the bad things um, about the Gambia for me mm -hmm. would be, you know, these are things that are bad, but, you know, I don't want to say it like um, to insult or anything. No. I want to say it as a way of basically just pointing it out, basically saying what we can do to help solutions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, the first thing that I noticed is um, feeling like a foreigner. Mm. I didn't know because in my head, in my head, I'm Liberian. In my head, I'm African. Absolutely. So when I go there and I realize, wow, all of a sudden, you know, they hear the way I'm talking. I'm black, but it's a different culture. So they look at me like, I'm a foreigner. Yeah. So that part, I didn't like so much, you know? I didn't like that part very much. Um, but I got used to it, you know, you gotta learn the language, you gotta adapt, that's what it's all about. Um, you can't just go somewhere and expect for people to just open their arms to you, like all the way and understand exactly who you are when it's a majority of those people act a certain way. And it's just a little bit of people there that are African-American or diaspora. So you know what I'm saying? Right. So you kind of have to take the responsibility of adapting to them mm -hmm. a little bit more than them to adapt to you. So it wasn't that big of a deal because I got over it. Um, another thing I would say is for me, I feel like the transportation system Mm. and the roads and the taxis oh my god yes 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 for me that was a, a no no but it's one of those things where i feel like there are solutions so mm -hmm. even though it's a negative there's a there's a way to fix it okay. so you know there's a way to fix it like the taxis for me um i was feeling like i kept seeing that the taxis I saw a Gambian flag and I saw the Sweden flag um, put together on a company for taxis. And I'm thinking, wow, couldn't it be something else that helped? Couldn't it be maybe some African-Americans, some um, uh, diasporas from England, um, some diasporas from Australia? I don't care where you're from, but couldn't it be our own people that help with those taxi services? I noticed that a lot of taxis don't have seat belts. You know, um, when you do the um, when you do the township, which is when you take the, the not the township, when you do the, the taxi buses, basically like the white vans, those ones, when you get inside, it is a culture shock, I depending sure. on what you're used to. That's what I missed, though. <laughs> you missed that part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the little things, the little things can bring joy as well. But, you know, that. There are times where even through all the bad experiences or bad experiences, mm -hmm. I wouldn't change it for anything wow. because it, it let me learn a lot and it, let, it showed me the, the country for what it is, you know? Mm. So I, I did definitely enjoy even the negative parts of the, wow. my experiences. Yeah. 
Wow, that's amazing. And I was started with the uh, the food. Like I always say it as here, like when I'm having a conversation with Americans, I tell them that I told them something, any, uh, something good about Africa. There's a lot of good things about Africa, but the food in Africa, you know, is off the hook. Cause like, like you said, the vegetables, you can go to the market, uh, whatever you're gonna uh, buy in the morning, is not gonna be there in the afternoon or in the mm. evening. You're gonna if you go there in the uh, evening, you're gonna have you're gonna find a fresh ones from the market from the farm, like from the farm, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, right, right. So like yeah. I mean, it's all organic. You know what I mean? So that's the I think Africans, you know, we need to, you know, um, make good use of those kind of things. We 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 take those kind of things for granted, but those are things that are you know keeping us alive. You know, um, we need to leverage our food. It's, it's, it's crazy though, because you see people, we have all that there, people still import food, like, yeah, yeah canned food, like, you know, it's the mindset, you know, but, you know, don't worry about it. anything you said here, negative, you know, it's all good, because that's what we do here, you know, we motivate, we inspire people, absolutely, we enlighten people too, yeah, you know, that's what we need to do, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is enlightenment. You know, it's not something to attack Gambian lifestyle or no. I'm a Gambian mm-hmm. and this is what I do. Every week, this is what we do. You know, we we trying to um, you know, change people's mindset, you know, when you come because that's the only way we're gonna uh, move forward as a people, you know, as a as a community, you know, and we need to talk to up here each other and then change our mindsets about stuff, you know. You know, yeah. Yeah. So thank Absolutely. you for sharing that though. We really, really yeah. Know appreciate that yeah so um before the next question i know you're gonna be do you know this thing you know i saw some some men drinking that but this is a gambian thing (laughs) oh yeah i've seen it a lot yeah (laughs) what is inside of it actually it's a uh it's a green tea but a a different kind of green tea It's, it's um it's a little bit um you know um bitter is stronger than the normal one, like, oh. but, uh, yeah, you know, that's wow. good. You know, it's addictive though. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's okay. why you see all those guys, you know, drinking it all the time. It's just addictive. You know, I don't know what they got in there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's some good stuff though. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, some good stuff. <laughs> all right, so now you said um some of the, you know, negative part of things that we need to adjust in, you know, in order to for us to have a better community, better environment. But then um, now you still, you, like you said, you still, you know, um, want to go to Gambia. You know, I saw in one of your videos, you say you want to relocate to Gambia, you know. So yes. can you expand on that? Like what actually like draws you to uh, uh, actually take that profound, um, you know, um, decision and say, you know what, no matter what, I'm moving to Gambia. Um, the thing that really, really, really pushed me to yeah. go to Gambia is going to be the lifestyle. Mm. Having a healthier lifestyle. I'm talking about mentally, spiritually, physically. You know, we talked about the fruits and vegetables, the right. food being healthier, the sun. You know, just being there for three weeks, just three weeks, mm. my skin on my face, my acne, 90% of it cleared away. Wow. Um, exercising more because you're walking more. Um, you know, the system there is different. It's not uh, westernized, you know, it's different. The lifestyle in the Western civilizations is very backwards. Mm. And it, it has this way of psychologically and mentally really messing with you it you know overworking its citizens not treating them right subliminal messages all of these like crazy scary things where some people go crazy you know Mm -hmm. some people either turn into workaholics or they go crazy and i said you know what i want a simple type of life i want a simple type of life i want to get my land somewhere and i didn't want to have my land in america because the only place I can have land here means that I'm in a place where I will be even more of a target as a black person. Mm. Um, because I will be around your quote unquote redneck. Right. So that's where the land is cheaper, but and my life is at risk. 
So I said, why am I wasting my time here? Why don't I go back to my birthplace, which is Africa mm -hmm. and Gambia? I said, you know what? I'm going to pick Gambia because of all the things I'm seeing that's good. I'm going to get my land and I'm going to build my um, wellness center. I'm working on building a wellness center and I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen. You know, so the top, top thing for me is going to be the lifestyle, just a simple simpler lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, you know, and also to give back to the community as well. You know, I'm a natural humanitarian. I like to do these things, you know, it makes me feel happy, give back to the community and what better community to give back to than um, my own people. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Wow. Man, it's amazing. Actually, that's what we, that's part of things that we do here. We encourage people, you know, our people to invest back home and all that you're seeing here is investment. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's important. So now, you know, let's talk about in, uh, investing in, in Africa, uh, mm. the importance of investing in Africa so that our view is right there. Because now we, t when I say I'm talking, when I talk, I talk to every black person because we are all Africans. You, it doesn't matter if you're African-American, if you're African on the continent or you are Caribbean African or wherever you might be, we're talking to African. And I think it's time for us, you know, to set our focus on Africa because Africa has a lot to offer, but we exactly. have to make, we have to, uh, nobody's going to do it for us. So we have to do it as African. People are doing it, but they're not doing it for us. They're doing it for themselves. If you mm. do it, like I said, if you give back, Actually, you go to you go to Gambia. You helping people. Who are you helping? Black people. Those are Gambians. You're not helping nobody but Africans. You know, so that's very important. So can you can can you um, expand on that? Can you uh, explain how important it is, you know, to invest in Africa and some of the business opportunities that you see you spotted in Africa because you've been there. You just came back. You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I can expand on that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's so important for us to give back to Africa mm. because we have to have each other's backs, you know. I oh, agree gosh. with you too. Mm. We're all Africans, whether you're from um wherever, you could be from Mars, but if you black, you know what I'm saying, you're African. So it is very important for us to take care of our actual land. Mm. You know, everyone has the land that they came from. You know, Chinese, they have China. This place has this place. That place has that place. What about our land? And when you really look at it, our land is the only, it's a big opportunity for us to do better and heal. I don't even want to say do better because we're doing we're doing great. Mm. You know, the race for us, the, the truth is the race for black people, like the actual race that we're running in life in the social you know, world and economically and everything. The race for us, we have to run a little bit harder than other ethnicities and other races and color skins. So we need a solid foundation. And the best solid foundation that we could have is our actual homeland. We need to have a homeland, a place that we can call home. Because the problem is when we were stripped away, colonized, African countries being colonized, their languages being stripped away, being um, pulled away from each other, when we were stripped away and colonized, and when people were enslaved and spread all over the world, We've had, we got stripped away from where? We got stripped away from our home. We got stripped away from Africa. Yeah. So what's gonna bring us back together? To go back home. You know, not everyone's gonna jump on the bandwagon. Not everyone's gonna do it and maybe not everyone should do it. Mm -hmm. But that is very important because it's gonna bring us closer together and it's gonna give us a safe place to be. It's going to give us a good foundation and a place that we can actually call home and a place that we can actually build our economy 
as Black people, build our um, our our race up, build our our self esteem, build our um, our culture. You know, really understand one another and unite as one. So the importance of investing into Africa is and investing in the Black community is is extremely, extremely, extremely important. Extremely important. To me, I feel like it's the most important thing because once we have that done, we have each other's back. You know what I'm saying? We have a place where we can say, oh, wow, there's people in um, the US getting hanged. Why are you doing that to our people? You know, Africa can speak up and say, why are you doing this to our people? Why are you doing this to our people in um, England? Why are you doing this to our people in Australia? What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? So I think that's very, very, very important. And um, moving on to the investment opportunities, they are just plentiful. I know. <laughs> There's so many investment opportunities inside of all of Africa and inside of Gambia. There's so much. There's it's just if I really were to list all of the opportunities, it would take me forever. But some of the top ones that I notice um, is healthcare. And mm -hmm. the ones that I'm gonna um, mention here is, I'm mentioning it because not only is it a good investment because it's gonna bring you money if you invest into it, but it's a good investment because it's really gonna help build um, Gambia and build the economy and build their level of quality when it comes to standards. So healthcare is a big, big, big deal, I feel like. And then another thing I feel like is a big deal, you actually mentioned this, mm -hmm. is the produce. All of your produce, you know, oranges, all of these things, some of the produce, they actually can grow there but where we actually could grow there, but we choose to um, get it imported from other places. Mm. You know, grocery stores. If you have an idea to build a grocery store, build a grocery store that is beautiful, that's great. I think that's gonna help the economy. Um, when it comes to actually investing in business opportunities, I think it's important to just do what you can handle. Anything is good. But if you have the money, if you have the um, knowledge, if you have the, um, the um, stamina, I would say try to build something that's gonna be a franchise, something mm -hmm. that's gonna be multiplied. You know what I'm saying? When it's multiplied, then there's more black owned businesses. So one company, you know, one restaurant, one healthcare facility, but it's located throughout all the different villages. Each village has a healthcare um, place, you know, including the cities. And I feel like also mentioning that I do feel like it's important to invest in the villages as well, mm -hmm. because I see that the government um, and, you know, government all over the world, they just suck. Yeah. <laughs> they just suck. But I, I think it's important for us to also make, not to forget about the villages, mm -hmm. you know, not just invest inside of the cities, but make sure that you do something for the village. You know, even if that's donation, if you can donate seeds to some of the um, ladies that rely on um, crops and agriculture to survive, but they don't have the seeds or they don't have the water system, you can help them with that. Um, another thing that's gonna be really good is going to be, um entertainment adult entertainment you know like um playing darts going bowling movies things like that things to get people a little bit you know you don't want to get them westernized or anything like that mm -hmm. but just things to get people um kind of just seeing what else there is inside of life you know what i'm saying seeing what other things there are you know so adult entertainment to kind of get people um, to have something to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
Another thing that's going to be great that's actually going to help the economy and help the Gambia is going to be trash system. Mm. You know? Yeah, absolutely. This is a problem that's all throughout Africa and throughout, you know, um, certain countries, you know, India and stuff like that. But with all the knowledge that we have as diasporans, as Africans, there's very smart and intelligent Africans that have gone to school no that know so much. Mm. With all that knowledge, why do we not have a trash system in the Gambia, like a proper one? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That can at least, it doesn't have to be trash in front of each house, but maybe it can be trash. There's a big dumpster and everyone just goes to that dumpster to throw their trash. And then that big dumpster goes into the trash um, truck and it goes away, you know, for each neighborhood. You have that. Um, another thing um, that the Gambia would benefit from would be, um, let's see, I got lost. <laughs> That's a lot, man. <laughs> it came to me. Yeah, it's all see. good, man. <laughs> it's too much talking, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is amazing, man. I'm, you know, you know, actually, you know, this is what we do. You know, you're helping us right now because, you know, I haven't been to Gambia in a while, so you just came back. But um, that's something that, um, you know, is going to benefit this show. People who watch this show all the time, they're picking, man. You, you, you definitely, you know, uh, come on, man. Like, this is amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. You can go there's on. So um, much. Yeah, like that's so much. Hey, I would be here forever. Yeah, if I absolutely. Was yeah. Yeah. And this, these are the things, the, the, the things that you say right now, these are very important things that people can, you know, invest on. You know, um, it, 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 that's the only way we're going to be um, um, successful as a community because when we, we complain all the time, these Chinese people, they, you know, Europeans are in Gambia, they, you know, um, taking all our investments and stuff like that, but you're not there to do it. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not there to do it. So somebody else is going to come. And in, we cannot say this can be there. Of course, that's not, you know, the world is a um, global village, you know, we all, you know, in Iraq and then, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. But then if you are there, you know, your purpose is going to be more, you know, beneficial to the people because I know the black, black people, are, if they go back, they don't come back. You know what I mean? So that means you sit in there, you know, you, you're going to, uh, people going to benefit from whatever you have there. But those people, you know, the disadvantage that they have is whatever they have, they take it out. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah, they take it out. So it's important as Africans, you know, you know, we look into that. You know, and you yeah. Know, yeah, when we spotted this kind of investment opportunities, if you had the, you know, opportunity, you have the, you know, chance, you have the resources, I think you should venture into it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing, yeah, one thing too, you know, if we, a single person don't have the money, we can, we can join, you know, we can make a, you know, join investments, you know, that's the only way, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, it's going to sometimes, because as, as a person, you know, it might not work for you. You might have the vision, you might have, but you might not have the resources. So exactly. like-minded people, like-minded people join together, make it big. Yeah, yeah. you have to, you yeah. have to. If you That's see true. somebody has the same idea as you, or if you see someone, they don't have to have the same idea as you, but if you see that you're skilled in something, yeah. try to work with somebody who can actually help you that may know an area that you don't know, yeah. you know, work together work together no separation cooperation absolutely. absolutely yeah that's what it is man and now um a lot of like you said a lot of people are moving back gambia has been on the spotlight for many <laughs> you know a lot of people trying to move back you know we have uh you know africans in the diaspora moving back and um for me personally when i see that i feel super excited because you know i'm i kind of have this i'm a I'm, I'm not going to say I'm a Pan-Africanist, but I have the Pan-Africanist mentality. You know, um, as Black people, that's the only way unity, you know, we have to come together and unite. But then, um, you know, in order for us to do that, we need to be able to assimilate, you know, into the African society when we go there, you know, um, because if, if we go there and then um, 
say, oh, okay, I'm from America, African American from America, I'm a Caribbean, you know, I'm just going to settle in a area that only Caribbean people, African American people live. You know, for me, I don't support that idea. What I support, uh, support it is we need to assimilate with the African society so we can learn from Africans. You know, we can be educated when it comes to our culture. You know, we can respect each other, you know, um, and then, man, we're going to be big, man. We're going to yeah. be big. So I we're really, going to be big. Uh, yeah. So what do you have to tell our brothers and sisters who are moving back home, you know, who are trying to move back home, you know, um, when it comes to this aspect? Um, when it comes to this aspect and everything we're talking about, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, one of the first things that come into mind right now is, you know, everyone who wanted to come home from all over, mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid to spread out. You know? mm -hmm. There's, There's a lot countries. of space out there. <laughs> So many yeah. countries, you know, yeah. um, then you got different places. You got mm -hmm. South Africa, you got Tanzania, you got, you even have islands, you know, um, you have all these places where um, it's, you know, it's not just the Gambia, you know, mm -hmm. the Gambia is beautiful and all wow. this, but let's try and put some other countries in the spotlight as well. I think that's, Absolutely. Important, you mm -hmm. know, I think it's important because yeah. um, you don't want to overflow as well and give it the country so much shock, you know, so much change at once. Um, but I would say definitely do that. I would also say make sure that you do your research because, um, you know, just make sure you do your research. So the less surprises, the better, especially if you've never been to Africa before. Mm. You want to make sure that you're going to somewhere where they can at least speak your language a little bit if you feel like that's going to be a problem for you because communication is very big. Right. Um, you want to make sure you go somewhere where it's at least a second language, you know, um, you want to make sure that you go somewhere before you go there, research about the culture, research about the different tribes that exist there, where the tribes came from, whether they're, um, what are their foods that they eat, you know, um, what are the, what is the, the, um, morals and the standards? Is it a country where you should cover up? you know, and you shouldn't be wearing, you know, um, short shorts, you know what I'm saying? Or is it a country where it's kind of doesn't matter, you can wear those things, you know, just make sure you do your research. So that way, the culture shock is still going to be there, obviously. Mm -hmm. But just make sure it's not that um, much of a shock, because you mm -hmm. did your research. And another thing is when you go to Africa, you want to go there with a plan. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to just go to Africa with nothing in your hands and your hands mm. swinging. You know what I'm saying? You want to go there with a plan. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you're good at? What is it that you can create? Um, because if you go there and you sit down and you don't know what you're going to do and you don't know what you're good at and you don't even have a plan or anything, then you're just picking on people and you're just judging everyone that's not good. Mm -hmm. Now, on the flip side, you can go there and observe and see what the country needs. So, you know, it's really tit for tat. It depends on, um, you know, who you are and what works better for you. But I would say mainly definitely spread out and make sure you do your research before you come there. And also make sure that you do things that are going to give back to the actual African people and the Black community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I always say that, and I think that's very important because, um, you know, in Africa, you know, we have a lot of land, you know, we cannot exhaust African lands, you know, uh, you mentioned it here, like we need to expand stuff in the um, up country, even Africans, we, we, um, who are from there, you know what I mean? We don't do that a lot. You know, everybody want to live in the um, urban areas and, um, mm -hmm and then forget the rural areas. And it's important right now, uh, I tell people, if, you, if you're moving back there, especially you said it, you know, if you want to venture into agriculture, man, you can have like massive land in the villages where like you don't even, sometimes you won't pay nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? They, they're just going to give it to you for free, you know, you know. But if you do that, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're going to, because, you know, it's, to them it's some kind of development. So um, if, if you do anything that you're going to uh, absolutely going to, um, you know, um, you know, benefit the community there. 
you know, you're going to employ people there. You're going to, your, your resources, when you have, you know, um, something out of there, out, out, out there, you know, you're not going to take it all. Of course, you know, something is going to leave there. So they definitely want to leave, leave with that. So leverage yeah. that, leverage that and assimilate with the people. And I say that, you know, African mentality or African mindset and the mindset in the West are totally different. You know, mm-hmm. even, yeah, Africans been through their own, you know, from slavery, from, you know, um, um, you know, colonization and all of that. You know, we still have, you know, the remnants of that. And the way we perceive things and the way the West, Blacks from the West perceive things are totally different there. So like you said, yeah. research, and if you go there, you know, just try to educate people. That's what I say. If you see something that's, you know, it's abnormal, something that educate people, talk to people, you know, because if you don't talk to them, they will know. A lot of things that you're thinking, they don't know that. The things you know, they don't know it. So it's yeah. important. For us to have a communication, and then um, have these a lot these kind of platforms to talk to each other, so you know we can be better as people. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Be respectful. Absolutely. When you, when you tell the people, um, and it's interesting um, what you said too about how when you go to get land, you can get land and depending on what you're buying the land for, like I know you can do buy land for business or you can buy mm-hmm. land for agriculture. Right. If you're buying land for something that you're going to, you tell what you're going to do there and it's mm-hmm. giving back to the community, it's no problem. Mm-hmm. And it's funny you mentioned that because that was something I just remembered. That was another good pro that I really liked about the Gambia mm-hmm. um, is how easy it is to really get a business set up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like um, in the US or in um, UK and all these other places, you got to get like a lawyer, mm-hmm. um, pay so much money, and then you got to get it, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Trademark. And then you got to get this, and then you got to get that. And then if you make a certain amount of money, then your taxes go up, then you got to get this and that. It's yeah. an actual headache. But in the Gambia, you get your TIN number, which is like mm. your identification number. Right. And then you you get a lawyer. The right way to do it is you get a lawyer. And then after that, you know, the lawyer does most of the work. You tell them what your business is about. And then your business gets its TIN number as well. Your business gets its own identification number. And that's it. Wow. <laughs> it's so much easier, you know? It it's is. so much easier. It is. You know, I, I always say this too. Now is the right time for Africa. <laughs> if yeah, you want to go is. to Africa, now is the right time to go to Africa and grab your passport or whatever you need to get the land, whatever you need. And now is the right time before it's going to be too late. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's strange, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, this, man, this topic is big, man. We can't exhaust this, you know. We're going to be talking about this topic, you know, because we need to enlighten our people. We need to, you know, have a conversation, especially young people, you know. Um, I think young people are the ones who are supposed to be doing this right now because Absolutely. what we have at hand, you know what I mean? We have the internet. Like, look, man, we're not even together. <laughs> we're doing this, you know what I mean? And a lot of people are going to benefit from what you're saying right now. So we need to leverage the internet, the, the technology we have, and instead of bashing each other, instead of negative stuff, you know, we spread the positive stuff, you know, um, and then we can be better. I always say this too, that, you know, if you are here, you go to Africa, you can have your land in Africa. And if, even if you're work, working at a McDonald's, and I'm not knocking on people who are working at McDonald's, but what I'm saying is even, you know, you don't have a career, you're just working as a regular person you can have a house in africa and if anything happens here like you can be here you know how it is it's stressful out here yes. you want to go you want to go for a vacation at least you have a spot to go you have a yeah. business a small a small you can start up a small business you can you working at mcdonald's you can start your own restaurant in in africa anywhere in africa anytime you feel like you don't want to be here you go there for vacation no stress yeah. You know, yeah. at least you're going to build something for yourself, something that, you know, you're going to take ownership of. You're going to uh, feel like you're going to, you know, whenever you have your downtime. So I think that's, that's very important, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank it's you very so important. much. I agree with you. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Yeah, appreciate thank it. you for having me. And Absolutely. I also want to say right now, because uh-huh. um, I know this is also going on um, my YouTube. So oh, any of okay. my subscribers who are watching right now, uh-huh. make sure you subscribe to Peer Talk because Absolutely. he does amazing talks. He does yeah. amazing talks. And, you know, thank it's you. good that we have the youth. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I, the youth and the millen- millen- I don't know how to say the word, the millennials Milena, to, yeah. do, <laughs> to really um, push this forward, you know, so make sure you subscribe to Peer Talk, you know. Thank you. And I will say it too. And I'm now going to say it at the end, but I'm going to say it right now. Go and subscribe. If you don't, please do go and subscribe to Blooming Woman. You know, she's, oh, he did. Man, my cousin right there said he did, man. Thank you, oh, man. thank you. You got to everybody, you know, because she got a positive message out there. You know, her content, her content is crazy. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta see her. She's so positive. You know, um, she's um, like I said in the beginning, you know, she's spreading love, you know, wellness and stuff and all of that. You know, you gotta check it, check out Blooming Woman. We're gonna put that in the description for real. You know, thank you. Um, all right, so yeah, bridging the gap between. Africans on the continent and Africans all around the world. You know, there's this disconnect, you know, I feel it. You know, if you're here, you know, you know, as an African, I like it, I have a strong action, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I talk, they know that I'm African, you know, talking to African-Americans, you see differences, you hear the way they're gonna treat me, it's gonna be different. And, um, you know, it's hard, it's hard if you, like you said, you know, environment that, you know, you barely see your kind, you know, all around you, you know, it's people who look different from you. But for people who look like you, teaching you that way, I mean, that's, that's, a, that, that's very hard. You know, um, can you, can you as, as a person, because you, you know, um, you've been here the longest, you know, you, you know better than me, actually, you know, and you have experienced me a lot than me. So um, can you talk to our people? why we should desist from those kind of things and try to connect as people? Oh, man. I think, you know, that's a, that's a big question. Mm-hmm. That's a big question. But I think one of the reasons why we need to not fight one another mm-hmm. and we need to not put each other down, um, our brothers and sisters, is because we all are suffering the same type of pain. You know what I mean? We're all suffering the same pain. We all have the same enemies. We have the same enemies. We have the same people that are um, against us, racist, white supremacist. um, You know what I mean? I feel Mm -hmm. like we're different. Sure, we're different in culture. We're different in mindset. But in the same breath, we are very similar. Our stories are similar. You know what I mean? Yes, um, yes, in America, you have people getting lynched. You have people getting shot. You have people, all these things, all these bad things, Black men just getting murdered. You know what I mean? And they're targeting the Black men because the Black men is what is needed to create fully black babies. So if they target all the men here, then they still have the black woman and they can water down the black race and repopulate with the black woman. Now, similar situation, you go to Africa, the females are targeted their ability to reproduce is targeted very hard in Africa. And a lot of the issues going up in Africa are brought up by diasporas because we, especially from America, have seen the capabilities and seen the evilness that lies within some white people, not all white people, but the ones that are bad, man, they're really thinking on an evil mindset. And you look at Africa, I think in, um, I don't know, I think it was Uganda, somewhere in Africa, one lady 
had 38 babies, 38 children. She has 38 children, one lady, one lady. Um, and Africa has the majority of black population in the entire world. And that's making it so that their ability to actually take over Africa through businesses, through changing the language, through stripping the culture down, it makes it hard because there's so many black people there. So they target the females and they go there. You have um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, all these different foundations where people donate to abortion plans. Countries that don't know anything about abortion, they don't practice it. All of a sudden, American companies and French companies are going in there and they're bringing in abortion plans so that the females, the African females can get accustomed to killing their babies. They go there with birth control, birth controls that's very bad. Some of these birth controls, they don't even use it anywhere else in the world, but they're testing it and using it on African women. So you see the similarities there. The black men are getting killed here overtly. The black women are getting um, babies and are getting murdered um, covertly under the table. So I think what we really need to understand is we have to take our differences and put our differences aside and look at our similarities and what makes us similar, what makes us family. You know what I'm saying? What makes us the same? If I'm fighting with my brother, right? Let's say you're my brother and I'm fighting with you. How can we connect? Well, I can say, oh, it's Mother's Day. We come from the same mom. Let's have a party. You know what I'm saying? We're the same. We have similarities. So we have to put our differences aside in order to understand each other. We need to understand each other that we have similarities. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's going to help us when it comes to actually connecting as diasporas and um, continental Africans is going to be learning and educating about our history. So much of our history has been stripped away. So much of our um, languages, um, some of our history has been manipulated and twisted into something else. You know what I mean? Even in um, America, they talk about, you know, how slavery and all that stuff. But the reality is Black people came to America before Columbus did. Mm -hmm. But nobody talks mm -hmm. about yes. that. Yeah. No one talks about that in front of the history book. Mm. So we have to educate people because sure. the the way that Black people are being put in history books, the way that Black people are being put all over the place in the social media, in movies, always the gangster, always the, the, the thug, always the ghetto person, same thing. The way Africans are being put, always poor, always, um, what do you, what do they put them like? They don't have uh, any hygiene. Um, they eat fish. All these crazy stereotypes. Um, you know, it's horrible. Hmm. And what it's doing to our mind, I think it's doing a lot more to our mind than a lot of us want to really admit and realize. Mm -hmm. And this pan-African, all this, you know, Black first and all this um, take care of Black people and all this stuff is important. It's important for us to build up our self-esteem. Hmm. It's important for us to build up our confidence. It's important for us to learn about our history. It's important for us to identify where things went wrong and who is doing the manipulation. You know what I'm saying? So learning about our history, even I, I don't know anything about African history, really. I feel like I don't know that much, honestly. I wish there's a people who knew that much could create some schools in Africa, could create some online classes um, for there to be African schools, you know? When I was in the Gambia, I saw Turkish school. 
what is that doing there? <laughs> Turkey, yeah. out of all places, Turkey. Um, there were Chinese schools throughout Africa. I saw somewhere that there were Chinese schools where they're teaching the African children how to speak Chinese. Mm -hmm. And they actually did a racial slur, the N-word. They made these little children say, I'm a N-word wow. in Chinese. And they had to take a picture with them holding that. You know what I'm saying? It's some mm. real evil stuff going on. Mm. And I feel like we need to get away from our differences, put ourselves on a pedestal because we deserve it. Put Africa on a pedestal because Africa is like a gold mine. Mm. It's our comfort. It's what unites us. Absolutely. You know, mm. Africa is what unites us. Africa is what reminds us that we are from the same place. Like that analogy, you and me, brother and sister, but we have the same mother, mama Africa. That's what makes us realize, you know what? We're related, we are the same species. And another thing I think that's gonna help with, you know, helping us come together as diasporans and um, continental Africans is understanding that not everyone's going to jump on the bandwagon. Mm -mm. Not everyone's going to get it. Some people really do have different mindsets. Some people, they're not ready to come to Africa. Honestly, you know, you come if you come into Africa and you're just going to talk about the bad things that you see, if you're just going to put the country down, maybe you should go back where you came from, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need some more personal healing. You know, not mm -hmm. everyone is going to... Um, necessarily be capable of just coming to Africa. It's not for everyone. Mm -mm. And not everybody's going to accept themselves as Africans. You got Black Americans here that don't want to be called African American because mm. they're not African. Mm. They're American. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So those people, you know, they'll just fall, they'll just stay. <laughs> yeah. But everybody else, cooperate because if you don't cooperate yeah. what's going to end up happening it's going to separate mm -hmm. you know so yeah. it's it's funny because it's a big issue it's the biggest thing that we need to do and tackle mm -hmm. is the relationship with ourselves as a community but in the same sense it's like one of the most simplest things to ex like to uh, kind of explain mm. you know what i'm saying so yeah. i hope we can i hope we can really 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 get there one day you know what i mean you know, I, really I think we're gonna get there you know um but it starts now with us young people mm -hmm. because we can't live like this forever we can't be hating yeah. on each other for nothing for you know for something that i know a lot of people who are saying africans you know are the ones who you know um sell you know slaves whatever you know i'm not gonna i'm not saying that thing happen of course it happened that's the african reality but you know we cannot live you know in in that kind of mentality forever you know we need to change it we need to for our future at least if we are if we d d uh, are dealing with it now we need to make sure that our future don't deal with it and like you say if we don't connect we're going to separate and exactly. we need to, yeah absolutely so um i think that that's a very important topic that topic that we need to have a, like a special session for with only talk about that <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's crazy it's sad though like i feel so sad when like things like that happen to me you know i'd be like wow man i look at these people because we are the same people you know i've seen a lot of people who be like oh you look like my cousin in the south you look like my cousin in california you know and i've seen people over here who look like my cousin my own cousin <laughs> you know what i mean mm, wow. look like people i know back in gambia you know what i mean so the same blood you know we need to we need to uh get rid of that mindset and then come together help each other i mean it, when you say it it's not like everybody like that. i met an amazing people i mean african-americans who embrace me as a brother you know oh, yeah who, yeah who absolutely you know um but then you know uh the 
it's obvious that a whole chunk of people who are out there, you know, still stuck on that uh, mindset, you know, we need to talk to each other, like you said, we need to um, um, learn each other's cultures, each, each other's experiences, you know, each other's history, you know, Africans, we've been through a lot, even Africans themselves who are on the continent don't know their history, so we need to talk, some people don't even know about slavery, you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't know we about don't know it. each other's history. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So they see African American, the only way it is, now it's changing because of the social media. But before, you know, anytime you see an African American, it's on TV, the Jay Z's, the Tupacs. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. we have a different mindset about them. But now I think we need to have a conversation and learn each other's history and learn so that we can respect each other and respect each other's, you know, um, history and stories. And when we do that, you know, it, the future is going to be better, you know? Yeah, preach, really. preach. That's true. I think so. <laughs> we got to do it. Yeah, learn each other, culture, all that yeah. stuff. It's yeah. important. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. important. Yeah, it is important, man. Hey man, <laughs> a lot of gems, man. Yeah, I'm not gonna let you go now, though. I I must talk about this. Okay, I saw yeah, you like feeding, feeding dogs in Gambia. I mean, I thought that was like super amazing. That's crazy amazing. Like, wow. What was your motivation? What motivated you to feed dogs? I know you have all that compassion, but then come on, dogs, man. Yeah. <laughs> in my gam in my gambian mentality dogs <laughs> yeah yeah dogs like you know dogs why dogs yeah. oh dogs you know, <laughs> i get it but yeah. i'm gonna really give a lot of the credit to my auntie fatu mm. my aunt is her idea all this work i'm doing with when it comes to the dogs is for her it's all for her she loves dogs she's been living in the gambia for over 20 years now she's from liberia um and she's from Liberia. She speaks yeah. almost every oh my she speaks God. eleven languages and she wow. speaks all the languages in the Gambia. I'm and super she also fluid. speaks um Creole and all, all these other languages, French, everything. Yeah. Wow. But um yeah, she really motivated me. Um, because she has a like a real special heart for the dogs. And she's been feeding the dogs for over 20 years now. And she says that every time she goes and she feeds the dogs, you know, the Gambians think she's crazy for feeding them. And she says some of her family don't even visit, you know, the house because she has five dogs in her house, you know. Um, some of them stay outside, but some of them come inside sometimes. Um, and she says some of her own family members, you know, they don't visit. You know, Africans have a different outlook when it comes to dogs certain certain countries in africa because each country is very different mm -hmm. now if you go to south africa you're gonna see a lot of people with loving dogs and stuff you know what i mean a little bit more than if you were to go to um gambia but in the gambia specifically i made her that promise that i'm going to do everything i can to help her build this shelter because she said i really want to get these dogs off of the street and I said, I'm gonna help you get these dogs out of the street. You know, I have a platform. Um, I can try, make posters, hang them around. You know, anything I can do, I'm gonna try. And you know, it's gonna be called Fatu's Animal um, Rescue and Search. And yeah, so um, it's just it, it makes it gets me really emotional because. Like the things I saw with the dogs, you know, I have compassion, a lot of compassion. And the things I saw with the dogs there, you know, I just feel like even when you look at it from a point of visitors coming mm -hmm. to come through the Gambia, nobody wants to just be outside of the restaurant, eat their food, and then this random dog just, you know, coming there with you know, their foot is almost broken because the car hit them. Mm -hmm. A lot of the dogs there, you'll see them with, they're all injured, you know? I know you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, no doubt. <laughs> they're injured, they either have a, their paws hit or some, one, I have a video on YouTube with one dog that couldn't even move to eat the food that we put down for him. That's how bad it was. And then um, about four days later, 
my aunt sent me a message on WhatsApp and she sent me a picture and she was crying because she said, I just went for a walk to go find that dog and the dog was dead on the side of the road and the people brought the dog into the sun so the sun could um, burn the dog. And you know, it, it's not for everybody. I understand some people think, you know, obviously that humans, you know, whatever. But when you really, really think about it, I'm gonna say this. Who wants to go to a country and see injured dogs everywhere, injured animals everywhere? You know, that's what I'm talking about, quality. Another thing is when you think about dogs, dogs can be actually be very helpful in a community. Mm -hmm. yep. The reason why a lot of the dogs in the Gambia are, maybe people are afraid of them, maybe they're aggressive is because a lot of them are stray dogs. A lot of them may have rabies, maybe they have worms, maybe they um aggressive because some people actually beat the dogs. I'm not gonna lie. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, their dogs could actually be put to good work. You know, police can mm -hmm. use the dogs. Mm -hmm. Police can use the dogs to catch criminals, catch whatever. Um, the dogs could be used for therapy. Um, the dogs could be used for, um, as a companion. I mean, it could be used for a lot, you know? So that's her dream. And I'm gonna make sure that I um, help her get that dream to come true. Yeah, and you're doing that, man. Thank you yeah. so much for doing that. That to me, that's the height of compassion, you know? A lot of people have these misconceptions when it comes to uh, dogs, especially like, you know, Af uh, Gambia is a, a Muslim country and all that. So they misconstrued the word of uh, how Islam portrays and not talk about um, dogs. Dog, it, the word dog is in the Quran. God, like you said, the benefit of dogs, like, you know, you can use them for hunting and all of that. Yeah. You know, God mentioned that, you know what I mean? And, you know, the bad thing about a dog is, come like they say, like, you know, if it licks you or the sliver kind of touches you, you know, you just clean that part and then um, go pray. You can pray with that cloth. And that's, even for human beings, we have that. You know, as, as a human being, you know, um, sorry to say this, but like, um, it's sexual secretions, you cannot pray with that. Mm. And you're a human being. So the yeah. same thing, dog, the saliva, but for you as a human being, you have yours too. So yeah. the misconception, but God never said hate them. <laughs> you know, the crowd never yeah, said hate beat them. them. Okay. Matter of no. fact, I will, I will tell you one story about a, um, a dog, you know, um, it's a very uh, famous story in, in Islam. You know, there was a woman, you know, in, in the olden days, you know, she was not living a good life, like a, a righteous life. But um, one time she went to the um, wall to drink. And then after she drank, she saw um, a dog panting. The dog wanted to drink too, it was thirsty. So, she took it up on herself and then fed water for the dog and then f the dog drank. Just because of that, she wasn't living a righteous, righteous uh, lifestyle, but just because of that, God you know, forgave her and God said, she's gonna go to heaven because of that, just that. Wow. Just that. Wow. So just imagine if you have the shelter feeding dogs. You know what I mean? So keep doing what you're doing, you know. No, 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 don't listen to whatever, you know, people say. You know, it's just the mindset. And it's going to change, though. Just keep on yeah. doing what you're doing. You're doing great. You're doing great, man. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. Thank you. That story is yeah. powerful. That's Absolutely. powerful. Yeah, like, that's a lot of stuff. You got to care for those people. Those, mm -hmm. those animals, they can't feed themselves, you know. That's They're what not, I'm they not living in the wild, like, mm -hmm. where they can just hunt other animals, they're living in a human territory. So they have to, they can't go in the kitchen and cook, you know, or pour water. So it's kind of a caring thing for us to say, oh, this dog doesn't have any water. Mm -hmm. Let me give it water. Absolutely, man. You can't go wrong, man, do it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, All love. I appreciate you for joining us today. This is an amazing conversation, you know, 
you know, I wish we can go on and on and on. You know, she got a lot of knowledge, man. She's a fountain of knowledge. She knows a lot. <laughs> so follow her, follow her on her YouTube channel. You're going to learn from, from her. And um, thank you so much for this. We really appreciate it. We're going to be doing this again. We're going to be doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. You know, I really appreciate it. Like yeah. I said, make sure you subscribe to um, Peer Talk. Thank you. And, you know, let me ask you, how long have you been back from, um, how long have you been in the States? Because your accent is very, is strong. It's strong. I mean, yeah, I've been here for, man, 12 years. Wow. Yeah, okay. I've been here 12 years now. And you speak like Wolof or? I speak Wolof. I speak, no to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I speak Mandinka. I'm a Mandinka, so I speak Mandinka. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's an honor to share a platform with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Like I said, everybody, you know, um, this is what we do. We talk to people, young people, or it doesn't matter. Anybody who has something to share, something that we can, um, I mean, actually we all have everything. We all have something in us, you know, as, as human beings. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter, you know, what you have. You still have something in you. It's just, it's up to you to make it to use, you know, and people going to benefit from it. And we need to, you know, um, um, you know, uh, do something for our communities, you know, positive things for our communities. If you don't know how to talk, talk, you have all the means to do. I, I, I'm, I'm a guy who, you know, who knows me, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not somebody who talks a lot, you know what I mean? But, you know, I, I feel that for okay. myself. Yeah, that you know, I need to do this, to talk to people who actually have the knowledge, who can, you know, you know we, we can benefit from. And, uh, you know, as Africans, African-Americans, you know, Caribbeans, you know, if you're planning moving back to Africa, it's not going to be a wrong decision for you. If you, if you, if you plan to do it, like she said, research do your research if you go there respect the uh the people on the ground you know um you know try to assimilate yourself try to speak the language you know that's the beautiful <laughs> part of it that's the beautiful part of africa that's what i love about africa if you live in africa you speak a lot of languages you know what i mean um and that's the beauty you know that shouldn't separate us you know that's mm-hmm, actually, absolutely yeah, yeah that shouldn't separate us you shouldn't say oh you don't speak this language you know nah man we all should, you know, uh, embrace each other's cultures, each other's languages, and each other's differences, you know. Um, so thank you so much, you know, for this, man. Thank you. It. All right. We're going to, like I said, we're going to do, do this again. So um, I don't want to keep you too long, man. Like, you yeah. know, but then uh, absolutely we're going to do it again. We appreciate you for coming out, uh, for, you know, calling in, you know, and um, joining this um, show. And it's going, this is historic because you're the first person, you know, we're using Skype call. So that's how it's Really? Oh, yeah, that's great. That is, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for reaching out to me, you know? Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, man. You and I will it. have you on my show too, on my oh, YouTube. All yeah. right. No problem. But Let's do it. It's going to be live. So you got to get ready for that. <laughs> no doubt. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do All it. Right. All right, man. Have a good night, man. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye. All right, everybody, share this video and let's keep the conversation going. All right.